Hey, what's up guys? My name is Jonah. Welcome back to my game engine series. So last time we talked about line rendering and rectangle rendering. Check out that video if you haven't already. It will be linked there. Uh, today we're going to move on and we're going to kind of We've been doing like rendering related features and I mentioned that that is mostly because of like the need to have some kind of debug rendering graphics inside our engine to validate like our physics colliders. Now that we have most of those things, we can run in circles, we can run in lines and rectangles. Let's switch kind of gear back into the physics system, which is really what this is all about. And I want to specifically integrate um, circle colliders because we don't actually support circle colliders yet inside of the engine. And that is something that Box Studio supports. So let's dive into it. So at the moment, if we take a look at our scene and where we kind of left off, we have these. Well, if I hit play, this is what the scene looks like. Lovely. We have these kind of um, like rectangles here in our scene, these sprites. And then uh, we have a rigid body 2D and a box collider 2D component, both of those components on these actual entities. Now that results in this being able to collide, right? And then this, this square over here actually has a dynamic rigid body versus this, which is a static rigid body. That's why these don't move and that one does. But the problem is we obviously can't collide with this circle at the moment. I would like to be able to collide with this circle. So what we need to do is set up a, a different type of collider called a circle collider. Now I did have some reference code somewhere because I did actually add this on a live stream, I think a week ago but, or maybe more than that, maybe it was like before optimization October, not sure, but I don't know where it is. So I'm going to have to implement this from scratch off the top of my head. So this should be fun. Um, let's go into, uh, the way that I like to like make components. Cause like our first step is going to be to introduce this new component, right? We need a new component type. We have a box collider 2d component, but we also need a circle collider component. Now the thing is, I am not 100% sure what we should put in here. Like things like maybe radius and whatever makes sense. Um, I mean, we will still take like the transform component of the entity into consideration. So we'll probably multiply the scale with that or whatever, or the radius with that scale. But um, aside from that, like, I don't know what else potentially should be here. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty like likely that obviously density, friction, restitution, stuff like that will still remain for circle colliders. But instead of us kind of guessing all of this and trying to figure out what should be here, the way that I in general like to like write, like to write code is by kind of working backwards. So if we go to scene instead, I'm trying to like guess all this stuff. If we go to scene and we see where we add a box collider component, let's take a look at how we would add a circle collider component. Well, again, if it has a circle collider component, what exactly am I going to do? Well, I need to basically, so we'll get that circle collider 2D component. Instead of setting a polygon shape, let's go to that. Um, actually, I'm just going to go into box 2D, which we have over here, source, I don't know, man, like collision maybe. So we have a circle shape. This is kind of what I'm looking for. And circle shape is in the box 2D API section here. Circle shape, so this is a shape. And this shape, I think, has a radius. So actually, every shape has a radius here in the base class. So we can obviously, uh, we'll obviously use that. But then the circle itself, you can see, doesn't have a radius. It just, it just has a position. So we have a position for it, which can kind of act as the offset, I guess, maybe. We'll see how this works. And then we have a radius. And then we have a lovely API we can use, like Raycast, Test Point, Compute ABB, Compute Mass, all of that kind of stuff, which is nice as well. So we know that these are kind of the parameters that we already expect to have inside our circle collider. Now it's totally okay for you to just be like, you know what, doesn't matter. I don't want to have a radius parameter. I'm just going to use the transform. That's totally fine. Why might you not want that? Well, you might not want, you might want to have a separate radius that you can use to control the radius so that it's different from the transform radius or not different, but used in conjunction with that as like almost like a modifier or a multiplier to that transform scale. The reason why you might want that radius is just in case, uh, you know, because the, the transform component itself and the scale there obviously affects more than just the circle collider component. Like if I'm actually rendering a circle or a sprite, it's going to affect like the rendering behavior of that. By having a radius as a separate parameter, a separate kind of um, like value that we can change inside the actual circle collider component, I'm able to set it to a different value than what the transform component 
scale is. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. But there are still ways around that. So even if we didn't have the radius value, we could still, for example, have the actual renderable entity as a child entity of the parent, and the parent is the thing that has the circle collider. That way we could set the parent scale to whatever we want it to be so that the circle collider is the right size. And then obviously, since the child is a child of that, it will go wherever the parent is. So the physics system will kind of simulate that parent and the all of the child entities, maybe there's just one, which is that sprite that we're rendering, that would obviously, you know, be affected by physics and all of that stuff. So you can also do it that way. That complicates the hierarchy a little bit. And I'm all about giving people options. So that's why I'm going to set it up here, but just a little bit of discussion around that issue, just so that you guys can kind of see just what I'm thinking about and what I'm taking into consideration when I write this code. So circle shape, uh, and then I don't think we have to do set as box. I actually don't really know how to do this. As I mentioned, I, uh, <laughs> I don't have any reference code, but it looks like we can just make it and then set the position and the radius, which is on the base class. So let's just set, let, let's just make a circle shape, which I think we have to, it's an incomplete type. So let's go up here and just include circle shape. And then, so we'll get that circle shape. I won't worry about setting it as a box or anything. We'll just do circle shape dot. Now the position, which is MP, right? Does that matter? So that's just a stack allocated object, which by default does nothing, which is probably bad because it won't actually set it to zero. So there is a set zero. We should probably do that because I'm assuming that position how do we actually set the position of even this though? So we've got size and scale, create a fixture. So this doesn't actually care about the position. I think the the body, we do body def position set. So I don't think we need to worry about this. I, what I think this is, is probably an offset parameter. So we'll just do set zero, just to make sure that's zeroed out. And then let's do radius, because otherwise it'll be just uninitialized memory, which is not good as far as I understand. Um, and then radius, we will set to whatever that radius parameter is going to be. So we don't have that yet, but you can see kind of how I'm working backwards because I'm going to create that. And then we'll take in the circle shape, the density and all of this stuff. This is more or less physics material territory in my opinion, but we don't have a physics material yet. So we'll kind of make it like so. And I think that's probably it. So you can see that basically the only thing we really need is the radius. Otherwise everything else stays the same as it would be for the uh, box collider 2D. So let's get rid of this. Again, I don't know, having an offset. Let's, you know what, let's play with that because I definitely didn't do that during the live streams. So let's have some fun. Let's also have an offset. So we'll, what we'll do is the offset by default is in fact zero. And then this is what I'm actually going to do. I'm actually going to set this, we can just use set to be that dot offset dot X and that dot offset dot Y. And then the radius, which, uh, why is that so upset? Because that's a vec2 for some reason. Good work, Cherno. So 0.5 is the radius because one meter is the diameter. And yeah, that should be okay. So now if we have a circle collider component, then we are good to go. Now let's go into the scene hierarchy panel, quickly add all of the UI. This should be very easy because a lot of it is actually the same. So if we go to box collider component, we'll just make sure that we add this circle collider component. I'm probably going to somewhat automate the way the components are made and all of this stuff, because this is all the same. It's once we have that list of components, it's really easy to generate this stuff from it. We can also have names or some kind of metadata attached to component, which I components, which I think will be good as well. Um, like we've got a few things. Well, I, I mean, we could have a registry of component type to name and all of that stuff so that we don't store the name in the actual kind of component. And I've got some ideas that I want to do because in Big Hazel, it's all manual as well at the moment, which is not scaling well because we have like 20 components, I think, and it's just getting a bit annoying. Uh, we'll add the drop the draw component as well. So we've got draw component. This is a circle collider, obviously and offset radius. This is just a normal radius. Everything else literally stays the same. So you can see it's like super simple to do this. Now for the for, for it to actually be played and everything, we need to make sure that when we copy the scene, 
we copy the circle collider component. And also, I think we also copy component and stuff over here. So this is the duplicate entity function. So we'll make sure that we do that. I like to just go through one of the components. Yeah, we need to do this thing. Haha, <laughs> I was about to get a linking error, like literally every episode when I add a new component, but not today because I've outsmarted the system. Okay, that looks good to me. So I think apart from serialization, which we'll just chuck in now, um, we're pretty much done. So this is the serialization. Replace box with circle, probably a bit faster to do a find replace, but it's okay. Circle collider 2D component. And then obviously we do radius instead of size. Otherwise everything else stays the same. I'm really interested in checking out that offset thing. We'll do that, we'll do that in a minute. And the deserialization obviously is also important. So circle collider 2D. Circle Collider 2D component, pop all that stuff in, I'm trying to speed run this, radius, radius, and all that. Okay, um, yes, and this is a float. I think that's good. Uh, yeah, I think we just pretty much fully added circles and it's been like 12 minutes. Is that real? Is this real life? I don't know. Let's not uh, talk too soon, shall we? Um, okay, so we have this circle. Let's try and make this collide with it, right? So we'll go to add component, circle collider 2D. I'll leave it, everything as is. Okay, that's already wrong because this is actually showing density. <laughs> um, but if we hit play, it doesn't work. It was I was so close. No, it's okay. Actually, I think I know why. It's because it doesn't have a rigid body. Yep. It works. And then for fun, we'll make it dynamic and we should see it roll down. Beautiful. Okay. Easy. Easy. Now, uh, let's check out that offset parameter. We'll fix the UI in a minute. But yeah, so what's happening here is this is a float in memory, but we're actually sending it into an I'm GUI drag float two. So it's obviously going past the memory address and it's going to the next memory. And it's just the next thing in the struct is the density. So if I drag this, you can see it's actually dragging both of these. <laughs> All right, um, because what I'm doing is controlling the density or controlling the, the memory, manipulating the data at the memory address that is for density. Um, now the offset. So if I offset this by like 0.5, what's, what's going to happen? Let's put this back to static. Yeah, so it looks like, yeah, it looks like what it's done is it's just shifted it. So it's actually like over here now. And if I hit play, um, we should see the Y be correct, but the X maybe not. Let me just back this camera up a bit, like to seven or something, because it's a little bit too close. And then we'll go back here and uh, we'll make it dynamic. Yeah, okay, wow, that actually looks quite interesting. So it looks like, so what have we really done? We've just shifted it by, it's hard to tell, isn't it? But it looks like it's over here. Well, yeah, we know that it's over here but I'm just surprised that it fell on the Y axis as well. Oh, maybe it rotated. Let's, let's fix the rotation. Yeah, that looks a bit better maybe, but now it looks like it's like here. That's weird as well. Sometimes it's hard to see what's going on if you don't have um, the, visual, the physics visualization. This is exactly why we're building all of this physics visualization stuff, by the way, because otherwise it like literally does not make any sense. Um, so let's maybe try this. Let's let's put this um, here. So what's going on with this camera? It's still the camera is still in a rubbish location. I want to kind of what's it zero zero? Let's just move the camera like here. Yeah, that's better. So um, let's try and what am I trying to do? Let's make the offset. We'll put it like 0.5 on Y, which will push it up. It should push it up. And then what I'll do as a test is so 0.5 Y will offset it to be here. So if I put this to, so what's that roughly? One point. So I, I would like to have it at 1.74, but if I subtract, 
sorry, if I add, let's just do 2.24, that's 0.5, right? So this should be, it should still be where it was before. And just for fun, I'm gonna duplicate this circle. We're gonna use this as a visualizer. I'll make this like this color and I'll actually pull it up to what it was, which was 1.74. So basically, oh, and it will obviously get rid of like the, uh, the, physics components from it. So this does not have any physics components anymore. This is just purely for rendering. Um, and then what it should be though, is the location of the collider of this entity. So the cube should collide with this kind of teal circle, if that makes sense. And it, as you can see, it looks like it works. Okay, so that's probably good enough for me. Um, <laughs> If we wanted to try and offset it again, let's let's do the same for the x-axis. So I'll put this to like 1.72. So that's 0.5 that way. And then I will simply make the uh, offset minus 0.5. And I should still collide with the teal thing. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So it looks like the teal thing has a collider, but it doesn't. Because obviously if I reset this back to zero, zero for the offset on the orange circle, then well, there you go right? Oh, and it's actually dynamic still. Yeah, it is. Interesting. Cool. Anyway, so that is now the offset working. Let's just quickly fix. I'll, I won't save that scene. I'll quickly fix the bug here with uh, drag float two. So that's just a drag float. Little typo. And this looks like just about the shortest episode, the shortest and sweetest episode of the game engine series yet. And then we'll just, um, I guess I'll update this to be cool. So I'll I'll put this here. Well, you know what? Let's just roll it down. We'll we'll make it dynamic. So we'll add a circle collider and a rigid body 2D dynamic. And there you go. Fun times. I will definitely end up moving that camera though because it looks terrible where it is. That looks much better. Cool. Beautiful. There's our scene. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to hit that like button. I hear YouTube is doing away with dislikes now. So only I can see them. So make sure you slap that like button. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to help support the series on patreon.com slash the churno. Uh, you'll get access to Big Hazel where you'll be able to keep up with like all of the cool 3D stuff that we're doing if that interests you more. And obviously the funds kind of from that go towards basically producing this series towards producing like to actually getting people to work on Hazel and all of that stuff. So it's a great community. And obviously it's something that we, we were kind of building over time and it's very exciting. So thank you all for your wonderful support next time. What are we going to do next time? Um, I think we are probably going to, I think we're ready to actually finally start actually adding in those visualizers that we talked about. Cause we've got circle colliders. We've got, uh, rectangle or box colliders. So there are still a lot of physics things that I want to do, but I feel like we're almost like at the, at that first kind of vertical slice where we've got mm, like enough things for build, people to start making games, but I still want to like explore, you know, various like joints and, uh, some other kind of things as well, but maybe they will be a little bit better to do when we actually have interaction via C sharp. So we'll see what order we do that in, but that is probably what will happen. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you.